Florence, in your early life in South Australia, how did you first become interested in art? When I was quite young, my father was a, was a builder and he used to get a magazine called Great Paintings of the World. And it always included one colour reproduction in it on grain paper, which he would pin up around the house. So I became interested in, or visually aware, of Rick Corro and the last Gwyth and people when I was about 14. So you, so you had your own in-house gallery? Sort of, yes. But I thought I'd have an interest in have a go at painting when I was about 16. I bought a small little watercolour tin outfit and took myself up to the hills. So we lived at the foothills of Glen Osmond and started painting. So from that moment on, I became interested in watercolour. I had a motorbike and I'd drive up to Harndorf for the weekend and, and that's when I met up with Heisen and he became a mentor. And he convinced my father that I might, might make a go of it and that I should go to the National Gallery in Melbourne, which I did study there for four years under Dargie. And Dargie, of course, is very strong on tone so Heisen's words came through very quickly. A number of Australian artists have explored philosophy, literature and psychology, but your interest in these areas is particularly deep and lifelong. How did these cultural interests affect your responses to the numinous in art? Oh, that evolved very gradually. At the age of 30, I went to sculpture at Italy for two years, the Flat Alara. And I went on to London after the two years in Italy, and I was there virtually for another 10 years. Soon after I arrived in London, I started reading this book about Jung, and it really got, got me fired up quite a bit. And I then proceeded to get bigger and better books on Jung. And it fascinated me, the collective unconscious idea that we all have, a deep, deep down, a, a similar feeling about certain things. You mentioned a king, and everyone thinks of a king visually. But I like the idea of, of the unconscious, Images started coming out after that. The mandala paintings came out quite accidentally. I, mean, I was working in the studio and I had these large canvases and I started working on them in red and then I decided just to scrape a shape and uh, I got very excited by the image that came out and I realised from what Jung was talking about that it was a mandala. A mandala in Jungian terms could be anything. It can be a, a square, it can be something, a garden in a particular shape. And the concept is that it makes one feel whole and complete. Themes to do with anxiety, freedom, regeneration occur in many of your works from the 1980s. Did you regard this as a necessary process to arrive at a state of calm? They probably were, but I didn't recognise them as such. I didn't think that I was... A, anxious at that time. I didn't think I was getting any anxiety therapeutically out of me. More relates to the state of the world. Yeah, I think it was. Man's inability to handle freedom is, is a fact. A Kafka, Kafkaesque nightmare of things. They all join the same golf club and behave the same way and dress the same way and so on. So the cage and the running figures is, has a great deal to do with that. And there were a few straight running figure paintings, quite large. I didn't actually count them, but there would have been six or 7,000 figures running. You were one of Australia's first computer literate artists, producing computer-generated prints. How did that interest come about? I must have seen a computer somewhere, maybe out of Griffith University. They had a, set up an etching workshop which was a community access workshop. Anyone could go and do etchings there. I think I saw a computer there somewhere, a pretty primitive one. So I went off and bought myself an Amiga that had a memory of 1.4 megabytes and started teaching myself how to use it. And it had, had a simple form of Windows that later became very fashionable and usable computer. So that was back in 1986, that's a long time ago. And to this day, I now use a computer more than I paint, in the sense that I resolve images on the computer. It's a delightful thing because you can lift things, shrink them, enlarge them, move them, bing, bing, all over. What would have taken me a week of doing little pencil studies, 
I could do in half an hour on the computer. By the end of the 1990s, you've said that you were approaching the stillness and simplicity that you'd searched for. Did this assessment come with any caveats for your work? Uh, I started painting some uh, water lily paintings, just a few at that time, not a lot, but just a few. I guess there's not too much dark stuff coming up from the inside uh, like there was earlier on. It could just be an age thing or it could be that I've finally found a slightly peaceful state of being. Thank you very much, Lawrence, for talking today about your life and art and it's been such a career of great artworks. It's wonderful to hear something about the background of what inspired oh, thank some you, of thank them. Thank you. But you uh, helped me unravel some things that just sit there for a long time unraveled. Thank you.